I'm Charles, Senior Applications Engineer at Mark Forged. And I'm Rachel Enfield, Senior Materials Laboratory Technician at Mark Forged. And we're coming to you live from Watertown, Massachusetts. So what are we doing here today, Rachel? So we're here to uh, announce the results of the holiday break contest. For the last three weeks, uh, we've asked you to blindly guess the strength of a carbon fiber reinforced part. Cool. This so carbon fiber reinforced part. This part. And they're guessing the strength uh, with kind of no context, no no STL, no Iger, right? Is it? Yeah. OK, so we, we, we told you nothing, told you to guess something. Um, but what's at stake? What are they winning? One of you lucky guessers is going to win a, uh, a brand new Onyx One printer. That's pretty exciting. Awesome. Cool. So uh, uh, as a reminder out there, a bit of uh, housekeeping, we close submissions on Tuesday. So you can guess all you want in the YouTube chat. It's just not going to count, unfortunately. Yeah. You're going to guess for pride. Um, yeah, we want to hear from you. What do you think this part can take? Uh, shout out in the comments below, or if you have any questions, our engineers are on staff to answer. Um, yeah, let us know your comments, questions, concerns, uh, and take a guess. Although, it's not going to count because we closed submissions on Tuesday. So the cont uh, contestant that guesses the closest number to the, uh, to the actual part breakage is going to win. Awesome. So. And for, uh, for the audience members that don't know, um, you know, we've, we've got this part loaded up here, and you can, you can see it in the Instron right now. We've got it loaded. It's ready to go. Um, what is the Instron? How does it work? Great question. So the Instron is a universal testing machine. Uh, it is produced by the company Instron, and uh, we have a custom fixture set up on there. Normally, it just tests uh, tensile compression and flexure, uh, which we are testing essentially tensile, but we are using a, uh, a custom fixture that we made here at Mark Forged, one of the benefits of working at a 3D printing company. Uh, cool. About this lever, um, I, we got to give credit to Rick Dalgorno, who is our resident simulation expert at Mark Forge. He's an application engineer um, who worked on simulation. And he'll be in the chat answering any questions that you have. So if you have questions, complaints about this lever, um, Rick's your guy. OK, so yeah, hey, before we go to breaking this part, which you see set up in the Instron, we're actually going to give you a quick walk through an Iger just to help you better understand what's going on inside the part um, and, and maybe show you a little preview of simulation if you haven't seen it already. Well, that's exciting. So, uh, yeah, again, we didn't give you a whole lot of information, but as you can see in the Iger window that I've pulled up here, um, this part weighs about, has, has a, about 30 cc's of onyx and uh, less than 3 cc's of fiber. So it's, a, it's a, a little amount of fiber, but it's probably used in a, in a pretty optimal way. Um, so let's... Let's take a look at the internal view, and that'll just actually show you the fiber placement. So yeah, uh, pretty st standard fiber layout here, concentric rings, um, two sets of them. So I've got a eight layer set on the top and bottom, um, two concentric rings all around. So that's cool. Yeah, so it's reinforcing the parts that are going to be tested. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And as, as we know, the, uh, the load kind of concentrates towards the outside of the part. So that's that's sort of what we have here. Uh, as far as print settings go, uh, let's see. Triangular infill, standard infill settings. Um, again, two concentric, two sets of concentric uh, layers, top and bottom. Um, yeah, pretty standard stuff. So, uh, I want to show you a little bit about simulation. So, we asked you all to guess the strength of this part. And yeah, granted, we didn't give you a whole lot of information about it. Yeah, you, you can see sort of the part, the shape. Um, but we didn't tell you how much material was in it, didn't tell you the fiber layout, didn't tell you the infill settings, didn't tell you any of that. But like, even if you knew that, you would still be guessing. Even with all the data, it's still a guess. And that's often what we're used to with 3D printed parts. We're guessing the strength of parts. But that's changing. With simulation, you're actually going to be able to get a number before you print the part, right? You'll be able to digitally test this part validate your design, and optimize it all before you press print for the first time. So I've got this, uh, this setup here, and it's, it's showing me big red flags. Um, but uh, I'm actually going to go edit the simulation case uh, just so that we can have a more accurate view of what's going on. So by, by default, we usually do 100 Newtons. So again, 100 Newton load is a 22 and a half pound force load on Earth. So here, here we go. Um, we're going to save the load case. And I'm going to hit the validate button. And this is going to show us 
whether our lever here can hold 100 newtons. Um, but yeah, the simulation software is actually going to give you the point of first yield. Um, what we're doing here. Uh, what we're what actually we going to be doing is breaking the lever. So even though we're looking at simulation, that'll tell us when things are moving, but it's not going to actually tell us when things are going to break. So we wanted to see exactly how much force we could put on this lever before it actually breaks. Because uh, if we take a look at this uh, simulation right here, it'll tell us the safety factor and like how much it deflects based off of the amount of force we're putting in, in there, but it's not going to tell us what it breaks at. Um, cool. cool. So I've set up two anchor points um, yeah, according to what Rachel is telling us. So the two anchor points here, um, so on this side, and we've got a load case which is pulling um, kind of upwards in that direction. So that set at 100 newtons gives us a safety factor of 2.66. So this is predicting that first yield will happen at about 266 newtons. Uh, that's, that's not a whole lot, um, but. No, it's not. But yeah. that also could have to do with the fact that uh, most uh, most beams and stuff that we're going to put in there, when you're actually testing something under tensile stress, it goes through a, uh, a elastic region where things can uh, deflect uh, and they'll still go back to their original shape. So it can deform uh, and then it'll still go back, but once we get past a certain point, it'll, it'll, it'll stay whatever extension that you have uh, moved this beam to. Cool, so the, the point of first yield, uh, if, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, is the point at which you're exiting the elastic region. So we want to really, with the part that you design for 3D printing or for machining, you don't want to go beyond the elastic region because then you're, you're experiencing permanent deformation. The part's not the same part after you load it. So you want a part that is going to stay in the elastic region um, and give you safety factor within that region. So anyway, what we're doing in the Instron is taking it the extreme. to the extreme, to the limit. And that's what we're going to do. So. I mean, should we? I mean, I don't know. I'm excited now. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm excited. I I want to see. Uh, so. I want to see a part break. Why don't we just send it over? Why don't we? Why don't we get started? Let's send it yeah. over to the Instron 85. Um, Rachel, you want to count down? Let's do it. All right. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Pull. pull. Cool. All right. So we're off to the races. Um, we are. We are starting to climb. It uh, looks like we are seeing the actual like uh, load increasing now. It was the flat region was it uh, reaching its like the um, so stretching the chain back out. Yeah, right? stretching yeah. the chain back out. I almost want to say equilibrium. Not yeah. exactly the word I'm looking <laughs> for. <laughs> so we are approaching 200 uh, with a uh, 200. 200 newtons is about uh, 50 pounds. It's a large bag of dog food. Average male bulldog, maybe a small bale of hay. Was someone thinking about dogs when they wrote that? <laughs> <laughs> so we are approaching 400 now. We're getting to see a little bit of uh, flex, nothing too crazy, but it definitely it, you can definitely see that it is actually uh, has moved slightly. And um, there's, a, there's a bit of an inflection actually, it's a small inflection in the slope of the curve. So in the bottom? Yeah, kind of near the bottom there. I, I'm wondering if that's uh, maybe that first yield. And the first yield, yeah. again, it doesn't necessarily happen through the entire part. It's uh, first yield could be anywhere, right? It's like a one region might have first yield, and that's what, what you're seeing there with the changing slope. So now we're approaching 800. So getting closer to like the end of the 800s, that's like about 200 pounds. So that could, that's going up to like a refrigerator. Uh, a, an adult North Pacific giant octopus. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have read that one because <laughs> it took me a little bit, but we're actually getting the region that it should be at. So um, that, that would have been uh, the weight that it should have been correct. Like, um, cool, so we're, so we're getting into the, the 900s and wow, it's, uh, it, is, it is past that point actually of, uh, of the elastic deformation, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we're, you can see on the graph that it started to not necessarily like level out again, but it's no longer as linear. Yeah, um, yeah. We like to like for a part that you design, you want to stay in that linear elastic region. This at this point is a uh, yeah, it's stretching I, it a looks lot. Looks like looks like there's a lot of deflection. It's stretching, it's it's moved uh, 39 millimeters at this point. Yeah, so over a thousand. Oh my gosh. Wow. And oh, getting close. Jeez, this is. Yeah, I'm like I'm, I'm looking at this seat. curve and I'm just. Oh, oh okay. There's there the snap. it goes. Okay, so, so it looks like it did. It did. It did actually uh, go where you where you seem to think that it would. Uh, was that the area that you were looking at at the beginning? Yeah. So I, I I'm looking at the part here, and there's a bit of a radius to it, and it looks like the break happened on that on that lower member near the bend in the radius. So 
So yeah, we, we're looking at the, the failure mode there, and that actually is the point. That's that's pretty close to that bend radius area. So and whether by design by Rick or uh, or if there's just something going on, maybe the, maybe the radius is too sharp there. Um, that is the point of failure. Um, you also see some crumpling of the infill up at the top. That's most likely due to the stretch. So where one place breaks, the other place is crumpling. So that's that's a entirely believable. Um, it's also possible that because of the crumpling there, there was like internal failure, and then you're getting the breakage lower. So yeah, uh, sweet. So with that, I'm going to check the submissions and find the closest guess. So based on that 1092.9 Newton braking strength, uh, our closest guess is Will M with a guess of 1100 Newtons. Congratulations, Will M. Congratulations. And uh, again, for any questions or comments, check us out. Um, be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, leave your comments below. Keep up to date with us, uh, check out Simulation, and have a fantastic day and a fantastic winter break, I guess. This is the Winter Break Contest. So. See you later.